Hey everyone, we're going to be working on a cardboard model of your tiny house project. So you can see the cardboard model that I've put together so far. It's a start. Obviously I have a little bit of work left to do on mine as well, but I wanted to get you guys, or I wanted to show you guys an example so far of what we're going to be making. Eventually here I'm going to flip over to Revit so I can show you what views I created, uh, what sheets I had to make after that, and then even how to print off those sheets so that you can uh, glue your paper to cardboard, get out an X-Acto knife, cut your parts and pieces, use a little hot glue, and hopefully recreate a better model than I have there. With that, let's uh, flip over to Revit here and get you rolling. All right, taking a look here at Revit, what we need to do for our tiny house cardboard model project is go to our site plan and in the site plan what we're going to do is add a bunch of elevation views and the reason I did new elevation views is because I didn't want to mess with my original four the east north south and west those elevation views I'm already using on my project poster and I just didn't want, you know, again, I didn't want to corrupt them, change them, or do anything. So I just, it's very easy to make new elevation views. Uh, on the View tab, Elevation tool right there. Click on it, and you'll see you get a box with an arrow. And typically when you get close to a building, it auto-flips to whatever direction you want to look. And you just go ahead and left-click to place them. And you're going to do four around the house, one on each side of your tiny house, and then four around the garage, one on each side of the garage. If for some reason the arrow goes in the wrong spot, example like here, if you click on the box, you can actually check these other little boxes to add views or that angle. So maybe it flip-flopped and um, you need to recheck this box or uncheck that one. But in the end, that's how you select which side of the square has views. So another thing about elevation views is when you click on the triangle head, you'll see you get that blue line, just like in section views. The blue line represent where your vision is based off of, or where it starts from. The way I always think of it is the blue line is me with my arms kind of stretched out, looking in the direction the arrows point. So I'm standing at the blue line. The dotted box represents how far away from the blue line I can see, or how far away from me, and how wide I can see. So for section views, we bring that box all the way back because I typically just want to see where I'm cutting or where I'm standing at. In elevation views, we need to see the outside of our house. So if I'm using this one for an example, and I need to see this east exterior wall of the garage, I just need to make sure that this box is at least halfway into the house. Probably about halfway is a generally good idea for all of these because what that does is later on when you're looking in through windows, you don't necessarily have to shut off everything behind it. I check all these. Yep, going out to the middle of the garage and check one more. A little on the far side, so I'll bring that back to the middle. And they're really wide, as you saw right now. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be shrinking that down when I crop the view, because I just don't need to see that wide. So, for example, let's go into that view. There it is. Now all of the drawings we do for the tiny house cardboard model need to be in a quarter inch equals a foot. So I'm going to change my scale. Quarter inch equals a foot. I'm going to go to fine detail. I'm going to go to shaded for now. Now we could discuss, or you could try maybe using realistic and printing that off and see how it looks. Um, not opposed, there's a little flexibility there for you to try things to change the appearance and get a better looking uh, print off the printer. Um, but those are just little settings you can try. So anyway, scale, fine detail, and shaded for the moment. And right away then, I'm going to crop this down. So I click once on that view box, and if that is not up, remember that's the little crop symbol with a light bulb. I grab the blue dots, and let's just start shrinking this down. Now this is going to be a garage exterior wall, so I don't need to see the house. When I'm working on the house, I crop the garage out of it, right? just back and forth. And I'm just getting close to the 
garage there. That looks better. Zoom in a little bit. I can bring this top one down some. Once I bring that down, now I need to just shut off things I don't need to see. And this one's pretty easy. There's no window. So I go VV, view visibility, and just kind of looking at it. Uh, roof, floors, site, topography, all those things can be shut off. So I can scroll down. If there was a door in the view, I'd uncheck doors. If there's windows, I'd uncheck windows. If there are floors, if it's the house, you might want to shut furniture off because if you're looking through the window, you can see furniture. Uh, generic models is often a good one to shut off because that's like window and door trim. So I'll just shut these off just to show you. These are the typical things I would be shutting off. Um, planting, if there's any plants or trees next to it or in the background. Uh, railings, if there's stairs that are seen. Maybe you did some roads when you're doing topo service, but here we go. Roofs, turn that off. Site. Topography. Windows. Hit apply. And I can see what's going on. Yep. That shut off everything around the building that I need. Left me the exterior wall. Perfect. But I also don't want the levels. So I switch up top here to the other tab. Annotation categories. I scroll down to levels. Uncheck apply and there they go the view is clean if you have section views you could scroll down and uncheck sections right there that's a common one in my house i had to uncheck a few times and then okay and there we go a clean view of your exterior wall here's one with window let me do this one really quick too just to review set my scale quarter inch equals a foot Find detail, shaded, click on the box, crop this down, crop it down to there, zoom in, pull that over a little bit, VV, and I just know that going through here, doors, floors, generic models, Again, generic models typically the trim. If if it doesn't shut off, remember you can always leave this window and hover on what you need to shut off. It tells you the category. Planting, get rid of that plant right there or the tree. Roof. Site. Topography. Windows. Apply. Got them all. Okay, I still have annotations left, so I switch to the annotation category and scroll down to levels. Uncheck and just hit OK because I know that's going to get everything. All right, so that's how you clean up these views for exterior walls. Once we have those views all prepped, then what we're going to do is we have to create some more paper. The first project you did, this was 18, sorry, 24 by 36 paper. It was huge. We are going to make something a little bit smaller, 18 by 24. So you're going to have to right click on sheets, new sheet, load the sheet. And a shortcut to the Genotas, if you have these cabin or Autodesk Revit extras, you can click on them. Then you can use that tri uh, folder with an up arrow, Genota, go into our course architecture design, paper and templates. And here's all the paper sizes we will use for this class. And you're going to be using everything that says Arch Design 1 for right now, whether it's the 1117, 1824, or 2436. So I can click on that to open it. I already did that. That's why I'm not repeating again. 1824, I'd hit OK. And then I would drag my main floor plan over onto that view. Again, quarter inch scale equals a foot. Um, you may need to duplicate this view. I was able to get everything cropped and in in one single view, but maybe you're going to have to place the garage as its own view and the house as its own view. I don't mind if patio stuff is left on or even driveway stuff, but we're going to avoid all the green grass and topography like that. All right, so that's that sheet. That's the main part. We're gonna, this gets glued on to an 18 by 24 piece of cardboard, so we have a base to build off of. 
With this 18 by 24, when you have it all prepped and ready to go, you're going to print it. So file, print, change to the plotter. And this is just like when we did the big poster, except one little difference. Properties, page setup. We're going to change to architecture, arch 18 by 24. And we need to rotate by 90 this time, because otherwise we're going to waste a strip of paper. The roll is 24 wide, so we need the paper to be sitting 24 wide. So landscape, rotate by 90. The little image changes. Very nice. We hit OK. We go to the Setup button. 18, we make sure that we are zoom 100% and centered. And... We're going to select our sheet, of course, when we're actually printing. And you don't need to see views. And it would just be this right there. The For me, it's the cabin model or cardboard model main floor plan. That's my 18 by 24. And I would hit OK. No, I don't ever save these settings. And then OK to send it to the plotter. The other sheets of paper are all going to be 11 by 17 because we're going to print them off on the laser printer. It's faster. It's cheaper. If you make a mistake razor blading and cutting, you can easily just quick send it again and not have to worry about all the plotter settings. So to set these views up, you have your blank 11 by 17. And if you're never not sure of your paper, by the way, you can always go up and hit the little ruler, that yellow ruler up there. Click a corner. Click another corner, one foot five, that's 17 inches. So that you can double check all your paper like that. Escape cancels that tool. All right, so my garage elevations, let me drag them over. And there's one of them. And I'll probably do an east or something as well. And there we go. There's my two ready to go elevations and typically on my tiny house I know for sure I can only fit two at a time eh, we might be able to fit four if it's for the garage here here's an example where I don't care if we go off the paper I'm only looking at my walls place sure I think we'll be able to fit all four garage walls on this sheet of paper And this one's probably not prepped. Undo. So I could go back and really quick, but guess what? With uh, video editing, snap. Again, if you can fit four exterior walls all on one sheet of paper, awesome. My actual house, though, my walls are a little taller, a little longer. I was only able to do two views on a sheet of paper. So you can see here I have... 18 by 24 for the floor plan. And then I have a series of 11 by 17s, two of them for the house exterior walls. And then actually my loft floor plan as well is on its own 11 by 17. And then another 11 17 for the garage walls. 11 17 to print these, you go file, print, we're going to go to the 1160 CLJ01. That just means color laser jet. By default, it's color. The BLJ is the same printer. It just defaults to black and white. Anyway, 1160 CLJ01. Properties. And we just have to change the paper size. So paper quality tab. Right there's our size drop. 11 by 17. And the print quality. Let's also change that to enhanced. Now we're there. Ah, a little nicer. Why not? Click OK. Set up again. Want to make sure it's zoom 100% and centered. Everything else looks the same. Hit OK. And we're going to select our sheet. And I'm going to uncheck views. And for me, it's just this last one, which I'll get renamed in a little bit. It'll be called CB Model Garage Walls. And I click OK. And no, I don't need to save them. And I could just click OK at this point. And that sends the job over to the laser printer. So all the paper that's this size 
will be on the laser printer. And if I'm able to do it right, I'll be showing you the actual pieces of paper that came out of the printer and how we're going to cut these up with a pair of scissors to get them ready to glue on the cardboard. So once all your exterior views are created and printed off, um, we glue the 18 by 24 to a big piece of cardboard and all these little wall views get cut out with scissors with like a one inch margin around them. So I got a little extra space to hold on to them while I spray them with glue and then we glue them to cardboard and then you very carefully start uh, razor blading out all the shapes and pieces for your models. Uh, a little twist on it, if some people are interested in maybe leaving windows and doors in, I guess I'm okay with trying that. Uh, let's see how it looks. Uh, if some people want to leave these windows exactly white and just razor blade across the bottom, that's okay. Or a third option is that you could razor blade out the doors and windows and actually see into your model, which would also be very cool. Um, leave that up a little bit to designer's choice, and we'll see how these models turn out this time around. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps.